So you're thinking about moving to the West Texas area, but you are but you might be deciding between Lubbock or Amarillo. Well, today I wanted to, to discuss the two different cities so that you can really make an in-depth comparison between the two and find out which city would be better for you and your family, depending on what your needs are. And we're gonna get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Lubbock, Texas, well then be sure to tap that bell and hit that subscribe button so that you can be the first to know about all things living in Lubbock, Texas. I get calls, texts, emails every single day from people just like you looking to make their move to Lubbock and I absolutely love it. So whether you're looking to move in 9 days, 90 days, 9 months, whatever the time frame, I'd love to meet you, talk with you, and discuss your needs and help you make a smooth transition into the Lubbock or West Texas area. So let's dive in and let's talk a little bit about the demographic and population between the two cities, Lubbock and Amarillo. I'm gonna start off by talking about Lubbock. Now, I don't know if people know this or not, but Lubbock is actually the 11th largest city in Texas. Texas is a big state. So I think a lot of people look at Lubbock as this small little town, which Granted, I know we know I know we are. We're not compared to the metro areas, but we are a big, thriving, bigger, thriving city compared to some of those smaller towns. And so, we are also the second largest city that is west of I-35. That means that we are growing and we are continuing to expand. However, I also want to talk about our median age. Our median age here in Lubbock is a youthful 31 or 32 years old. So we have a younger population here in Lubbock, and that is mainly due to the colleges and the universities that we do have here in Lubbock. We have Texas Tech University, we have Wayland Baptist, we have Lubbock Christian, and we have South Plains. So I mean, that's four major colleges or universities here just within a 30 minute radius. And so Due to that, we do have a younger population around, or population age, median age of around 30 to 31. However, with that being said, we also have a great youthful demographic as far as um, people that do not go in to attend Texas Tech. And so we have people that it's, love it kind of skipped a generation. So we have kind of a generation gap of the old farmers or the older people that kind of established here in Lubbock that really was around when Lubbock was a dry county and, and there was not much to do in Lubbock besides really farm and ag, right? So um, a lot of their kids have moved off and you know went to the bigger cities to pursue other jobs. And then their kids actually ended up coming back to Lubbock. So we do have kind of a generation gap, especially in the farmer, in the ag world, but also to just in general here in the Lubbock area. Great town for young youthful parents, also looking to be around other young youthful parents, but also to if you are older and you are wanting a smoother living, a easier living, we also have that to cater to as well. And so due to the colleges and universities that we have here, it is kind of funny because in the summertime, we do see a little less traffic, a little less activity going on around, especially the college area, which is around central or north Lubbock. People, the kiddos go home, and it's just kind of a great, just ghost town, I would say. If you do live in the north or central part of Lubbock, you definitely will feel it. Um, it's kind of like if you live in the bigger city, I know Austin, UT, when UT is out for the summer, going driving down Mopac in Austin is a breeze and so when the kids come back Mopac's crowded again very similar to that of Lubbock as you do kind of feel like you do realize when the students are gone but if you live south I mean really generally college students they do not venture south too often um, I can say that firsthand just living here during college and then also transitioning into the workforce field after college is you don't really understand the depth of Lubbock or all of Lubbock when you're in college because you don't really venture past 50th Street. With that being said, I just wanted to point that out. You know, we, we are a college town. 
quote unquote, but we also do have um, a lot of people that don't necessarily, you're not gonna be bombarded by college students everywhere you go. And I think a lot of people do, might or might think that, but that's just really not the case. I also wanted to talk about Lubbock's growth. And so what our projected growth is to be, from 2010 to 2020, Lubbock grew in population from about, grew in about 12% population growth from 2010 to 2020. So that's pretty big. And then also too, we are projected to grow to 275,000 people by two by 2025, which we're in December, if you can't notice the Christmas tree back there. And that's in a year. So right now, I mean, that is, that's crazy. And right now, or in 2025, they're also projected Lubbock County to be at around over 330,000 people. So Lubbock city limits is actually relatively small compared to that of Amarillo. And so if you do your research, like, wait, I thought Amarillo was bigger than Lubbock. City-wise, yes. Population-wise, no. County-wise, Lubbock is big also. So 330,000 in Lubbock County, that is a big difference. And so that is kind of going to be what if you do, if you have heard that Amarillo is bigger, that might be the reason why is because it's due to the city limit size. Technically, yes, Amarillo is bigger. But the growth and the projected growth here in Lubbock is no comparison to that of Amarillo. And so I did want to point that out. If you are looking for a growing city and you are wanting to have a small town, but also kind of big feel amenities with the opportunity of for growth and you want to see that expansion, you want to see and live in a city that's bringing in more commercial growth and more residential growth, just more things happening than Lubbock would be it. If you're okay and you're just wanting a smaller town living feel and you're not really that obsessed or want to be in a thriving, growing town, Amarillo might be a better suit for you. And I also wanted to point out with the Lubbock population is a very diverse population despite what people may think. Part of that has to do with Texas Tech and the other colleges and universities that are here in Lubbock. Also too, a lot of people do end up staying here because of the unique or job opportunities that are being offered to college students after graduation. With a below cost living, a short commute times, with a diverse work industry opportunities, it is no wonder that Lubbock actually has ranked in the top 10 cities for families to live in and raise their kiddos because of all those things that I just mentioned. And so, I mean, I think that's pretty great. I think that a lot, a lot of people don't give Lubbock the credit that it deserves when it does come to the diverseness, the opportunities that are here as far as jobs as well, and then just overall work life and family balance is everything here. I mean, people want to make sure that they spend time with their family. And they wanna make sure that they're not overworking. We appreciate hard workers, but we also give time to our families. And that is a really big statement to our city. And so, like I mentioned, Amarillo is not growing as quickly as Lubbock. They're growing at about one, a little bit less than 1% annually. There's just not much growth happening in Amarillo as there is in the Lubbock area. And so t really right now, there is about 200, give or take, thousand people that live there in the city of Amarillo or surrounding kind of parts of town. They're projected to grow around 205,000 in the next year or so. So you can kind of see the differences of the growth between Lubbock and Amarillo. Like I mentioned, it is bigger city-wise, city limit size, but people-wise, it's not as big. Fun fact about Amarillo, though, is it is the largest meat packing. It has the largest meat packing facility in the U.S. And it is home to the only nuclear assembly and disassembly facility in the U.S. So as you can imagine, they have a lot of manufacturing jobs. And then also, too, um, Amarillo became a very po big, popular city and tourist destination with the introduction of Route 66. And so that is really what made Amarillo grow during the introduction of a lot, not only Route 66, a lot of the other routes, but mainly Route 66. 
And I'll talk a little bit more about the attractions of Amarillo, which I'm sure you've heard quite a bit about at the end of this video, but really wanted to talk about really the size differences and population differences in Amarillo versus Lubbock. Now, Amarillo is actually almost dead north of Lubbock. So if you're looking at a map, I mean, you take I-27 all the way up about 120 miles, and you'll be in Amarillo in an hour and 45 minutes, depending on how quick you drive. But it is a straight shot all the way to uh, Amarillo from I-27. So it's actually not that far from Lubbock, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a very different city. Now in Amarillo, you're not going to see as much commercial growth, nightlife, restaurants, hip places to go and hang out with the family. You're not gonna see as much of that growth in Amarillo as you will see that in Lubbock. So if that is important to you and you are looking for things to do with the family and you're looking for more entertainment options, more restaurants to go to, coffee shops, we just got a Dave & Buster's, love a Dave & Buster's. Uh, we also have a main event, you know, those things, yes, I know they're commercialized. However, there's still fun things to do with the family. We're gonna have a ton more entertainment options as far as boutique restaurants, boutique hotels, that kind of stuff, just because we could attract more tourists due to Texas Tech and the universities here. But again, it just depends on if you're really looking for a really the, like a hustle and bustle of a bigger city with a small town feel, or if you're okay with a small town feel and you don't really care for the growth and the new developments that are, that are coming into the Lubbock area. Now I wanted to jump in to talk a little bit about the economy, what's driving the economy between Lubbock and Amarillo. And as I talk about Lubbock in most of my videos, we know that Lubbock is growing, you know? And so, but why is Lubbock growing? You know, what are some major job opportunities that are driving the Lubbock economy? And I wanted to talk about a few of that way you had a really an, an understanding of what's driving our economy and health here is one and the education system is another. Also, a few other major factors driving our economy is in, uh, we have a large presence of ag, ag tourism, ag economics. We farm a lot here in the Lubbock area, similar to Amarillo. Manufacturing jobs, we have a large tech industry, and also to entrepreneurism. And I've talked about that before, is Lubbock does have a great ranking for if you are wanting to start a business, then Lubbock would be a great spot for that due to the lower cost of living, due to the quick access to routes from distributors. So we do have that also coming in here. Like I said, we are we have um, the largest, what is it? The largest number of restaurants per capita than any other major city. So it's, we do have a ton of, ton of restaurants, a ton of new restaurants coming into Lubbock. And then also too, with Amarillo, Amarillo relies a little bit more heavily on the oil and gas industry. Lubbock, however, I think that's a misconception too. Sometimes we don't necessarily, we don't, we're not really affected by the oil and gas. We don't have miners or drillers or anything like that in Lubbock. The further north you go, Midland, Odessa, Amarillo, yes, you're gonna see a little bit more of a oil presence, but we do get a lot of people that work in the oil industry that live in the Lubbock area as well, because it is a bigger city. So I do want to point that out. However, with the introduction of wind energy, wind energy is becoming a very popular topic right now. Very controversial for sure, depending on the lifespan of these windmills, but we have windmills everywhere. In the West Texas area, Panhandle, Caprock, whatever you want to call it, we have a, we have a very large presence of windmills, windmill farms. If you don't know what windmills are, I mean, I, you know what a windmill is. I have talked about this before, but I mean, when you fly into town and you see red lights, especially if you're coming in at night, those are all going to be your windmills. And so Amarillo does rely heavily on the windmill farms, windmill industry as well. And they're also veering a little bit more to the aerospace, uh, manufacturing jobs, meat and food processing. And so you're going to have some more of those menu, just bigger manufacturing jobs in the Amarillo area than you would say here in the Lubbock area. And as far as affordability between Lubbock and Amarillo, generally speaking, depending on your price range, depending on what's important to you, they're going to be about the same. 
However, Amarillo actually compared to the national average is about 16% lower than the national average, just overall cost of living. Lubbock is about 10. So 6%, I mean, that's a big difference. Housing, it definitely does fluctuate though, depending on the oil and gas industry. Not as much as say Midland, Odessa area, but Amarillo does have does play a little bit of a factor in the oil and gas industry to, compared to their housing market. So, but overall, they do have a very affordable housing market there as well too. Same with Lubbock. And then as far as food, groceries, that kind of stuff is, is gonna still be very similar with, a, with around four to 6% lower than the national average. Now comparing the climate differences between Amarillo and Lubbock, generally speaking, they are going to be about the same. However, with Amarillo being about two hours north, you're gonna expect a little bit colder temperatures. So you can expect a little bit more snow, probably a lot more snow depending on the year. They get a lot more precipitation than we do here. And then it's just a little bit more cold when it is very cold, right? So you're gonna have a lot more, a little bit more freezes. Generally speaking, however, other than the differences in the snowfall, generally speaking, we are gonna have very similar weather. Recently, it's been cold. We are in the month of December at the time of this video. And we had a, we had a week or so that was kind of in the 70s, 60s, high 60s. Amarillo was the same, you know, so it, really you can kind of count on the weather being very similar, but you might just have a little bit more drastic weather in Amarillo than you would in Lubbock. A little bit more higher winds, a little bit more snow. So if you don't want to be in a lot of snow, then Lubbock might be a little bit of a, be little bit of a better option, but overall, it really just depends on the year. And I talk a lot about things to do in Lubbock. I've made a few videos on things to do in Lubbock. We all know that Lubbock has a growing nightlife. There are plenty of restaurants, bars, places to go and look at history, things to do with the family. So I don't wanna take up too much time talking about the things to do here in Lubbock, but I did wanna point out some things to do in Amarillo that a lot of people enjoy doing that you may have heard or seen in some movies. So. The first thing I wanted to talk about is Cadillac Ranch. Cadillac Ranch is essentially a bunch of Cadillac cars stuck nose down in a bunch of dirt and spray painted all over. So there's a bunch of spray painted Cadillac cars nose down in the dirt, in the dirt. It's a really cool and fun tourist destination. You can go write your name on it, take a picture, you, I brought, I went and brought my dog on a leash. We had, had some cute photos with my dog, my husband. You know, a lot of people just like to go because it's a fun backdrop. It's fun to do with the kids. They can ride on a car and it's just something fun for the family. Next is you may have heard this in movies. I've seen this in movies and I know there's a movie that I think it's with Will Ferrell. Cannot remember the name of it, but the Big Tex Steakhouse. Big Tex Steakhouse is where they have a competition where if you eat a, again, I don't remember the size, but it's a huge portion of a steak. If you eat a steak and some sides and some rolls and you get it for free and everybody's watching you eat it, you have like a time limit, about two hours or an hour to eat this whole meal. And they ring the bell. If you finish it, if you finish it, you get the meal for free. If not, you gotta pay. It's in, it's in a few movies, the uh, front and right when you walk in to the big tech steakhouse, you have a big, rancher standing right in front of the steakhouse so it's just fun even the buffalo i mean it's it's a fun steakhouse we went and ate there on a little date that my husband and i went to and it's not fancy by any means but it's just a fun way to go out get some history visit and see somebody try to finish the eating portion of uh, the restaurant and then also too i wanted to talk about paladero canyon Paladero Canyon, if you have never heard of Paladero Canyon, then you are missing out. It is actually the second largest canyon in the US. Second largest, and that is second to the Grand Canyon. And most people don't realize that we have this beautiful canyon here in the Panhandle, Amarillo. It's technically in Canyon, Texas, but very, very close to Amarillo. And it is 120 miles long, you can go and camp where they have RV campsites, equestrian campsites. You can even just do equestrian 
tours if you wanted to. You can go and backpack along all of the hiking trails that they have there. You can rent out a cabin if you don't have an RV and you don't want a backpack camp. You're gonna rent out a cabin. They do fill up very quickly, I think years in advance. So definitely secure your spot if you are into hiking, biking, nature, just exploring. It's such a, such a beautiful canyon. The sunsets there are out of this world. That is one thing about West Texas is the sunsets are absolutely stunning. But it's just a way for you to escape and don't have to go far. You don't have to go to Colorado and hike in their state. You can literally drive to Amarillo or if you live there, it's right, right in your backyard. Entertain, explore, take the dogs. They, they're dog friendly, horse friendly. I mean, it's overall amazing family experience that you definitely want to check out on your bucket list if you are visiting between Amarillo and Lubbock. All three of those. Make a sub at Cadillac Ranch, go eat some lunch at the McTex, and then go to have a hike at uh, Paladero Canyon. So I wanted to wrap up by just saying, you know, if you're looking for, and I've mentioned this a little bit earlier too, if you're looking for a city that is not growing as much as the Lubbock area, it doesn't have as many job, diverse job opportunities, it definitely has job opportunities for the ag world, oil and gas, manufacturing, packing facilities, that kind of stuff, aerospace, like as far as the nuclear plants, they have very specific niche jobs in Amarillo. In Lubbock, you're going to have just more of a diverse population with the healthcare education system as well too. Entrepreneurism is gonna be a little bit bigger here in the Lubbock area. And then the population size, Lubbock is gonna be bigger than Amarillo. And then climate wise, it's gonna be very similar, but Amarillo overall is going, might be a little bit less expensive for you to live than Lubbock, depending on, again, some of the factors that you're really looking for. So really both towns are great. It's just one's a little bit booming, more booming than the other. And you really can't go wrong by visiting both of these, exploring what each has to offer and really diving into either Lubbock or Amarillo and getting out and seeing these homes for you in person and just going around eating, shopping, enjoying both cities if you have time to do so. So if you have any questions about Amarillo or Lubbock or anything in the Panhandle, we'd love to help answer those questions for you. And if you like this video, go ahead and like and comment. And I'd love to help you make a smooth transition to Lubbock or the West Texas area if you're thinking about moving here. Thanks so much. We'll see you around.